Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes, and boy, what a requested one this has been. Today, we're going to be looking at the Talwar Assault, the be all and end all of the Talwar Destroyer line, a series of very popular destroyers in the Minmatar Republic tree. Now, I do apologise for the delay on this one. I have had this ship now for about a week. It's just taken time for me to actually skill into some of the relevant skills, because trust me, this ship is not relevant to have if you do not have Advanced Destroyer Command to at least four. So start training it now. What we're going to do in today's video is have a look at what this ship is, what it does, why I needed to train that high into destroyer skills, and then how you can fit this for different uses. We are going to be covering both PvE and PvP, though I'm not guaranteeing that I can get any PvP footage. I will try my best on this one. So do let me know if you enjoyed this video by hitting like on it. Subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live, and let me know what topics or ships you want me to cover in future videos. As well, if you want to go the extra mile to support this channel, you can do so by joining me on Patreon. Details are on screen now. That said and done, let's finally then have a look at the Talwa Assault. The Talwar Assault is the Minmatar Republic Assault Destroyer, and like the other Assault Destroyers, you'll find it up the Destroyer branch at Tech Level 7. This is also the final ship in the line of Talwar Destroyers that started all the way back in Tech Level 3 with the Talwar Trainer, which is one of the rewards that you could choose after completing Advanced Tutorial 4. If you did choose that particular ship, I do have a video on that as well, so you can check that out and see how to go through the Talwar Trainer, how to fit it and how to proceed from there. Of course, there's also the standard Talwar at Tech Level 3, and once we hit Tech Level 6, we unlock the ability to fly the Talwar Sniper. Again, I have done a dedicated video entirely on this ship. Links will be in the description down below if you want to check those out and see how they vary from the Talwar Assault, or if you want to use them as kind of stepping stones to eventually getting into the Talwar Assault. However, those are separate videos. Today, we are looking at the Talwar Assault in all its glory and what this particular ship is itself does. Now looking at its attributes and fittings, you can see that it's got four high slots, two mid slots, four low slots, and then three of each of the power grid and mechanical rigs. Its defense is 6,308, which is surprisingly tanky for a destroyer, especially a Minmatar one, and the vast majority of that is in its shields, 1,989. That's not to say that its armor or structure are bad, 1771 and 1568 respectively, but this is definitely a shield tank, which we'll go into later. Looking at the rest of its stats here, you can see it has an astonishingly small signature radius for a, uh, for a destroyer, and that does play a big effect in how the Talwar itself operates, as we'll see later too. 49.2 meters. There are a lot of that's very small for a destroyer. Scan resolution of 663 is ludicrously high as well, meaning this can lock on very, very quickly to uh, targets that are even smaller than itself. Flight velocity of 258 is fairly respectable as well. It's not the fastest, but it's definitely not the slowest. It's on the middle to upper end of speeds for destroyers. 5.0 uh, AUs per second warp speed, pretty fast moving mobile ship. Looking at its trait descriptions then, being a Talwar, it does of course have the roll bonus of 25% increase to missile torpedo velocity, which remember isn't just how fast they travel, but will also affect their range, which means they do have longer range missiles and torpedoes on a Talwar assault than it would be fitted to most other ships. It then also being an Assault Destroyer gets that bonus of a 5 second increase to the Damage Control activation time. Now Damage Control units as we've covered elsewhere in other videos give a flat bonus to various different resistances, shield, armor and structure and it's across the board. You can also activate it usually for 13 seconds to give a massive boost. On an Assault Frigate or an Assault Destroyer like the Talwar Assault you get that 5 second Damage Control activation time increase meaning that that actually activates for a full 18 seconds and that is a massive increase that is very powerful for PvP. Now here's where the skills come into effect. Advanced Small Missile Torpedo Operation gives an increase of 7.5% small missile torpedo damage. Obviously that at full 37.5% increase is surprisingly damaging on a ship that has four launches. Very, very useful skill. But the one that was taking me time to train into is that Advanced Destroyer Command. 
Now, the reason that this one is so important is because of what it does to the Talwar Assault. Advanced Destroyer Command Bonus, each level you have is a 15% reduction to the Signature Radius penalty applied by a Micro Warp Drive. It only says Warp Drive here, but I promise you from testing that it's to do with the Micro Warp Drive, of course. So the standard Warp Drive doesn't give a Signature Radius penalty. Micro Warp Drives do, and that's what it's referring to here. Also, a 7.5% increase to Stasis Web of Fire optimal range. Obviously, at full level 5, that is a whopping 37.5% additional range on the Stasis Web of Fire, which makes uh, things like, for example, where I've showcased on the, uh, the Assault Frigates, how to orbit at a decent range and use long-range weaponry to stay outside of web range, that is <laughs> suddenly a problem if you go up against a Talwar Assault because you're no longer outside of web range because this thing has longer range webs. But it is that signature radius penalty reduction on uh, the warp drive signature radius penalty reduction that is the key one you need to train this skill for. That 15% reduction, obviously 75% reduction when that's fully trained. I've only got it to advance destroyer command 4, so I've only got a 60% reduction, but at that point, the Talwar Assault does become operational. It becomes most viable and absolutely devastating once you have that full 75% reduction, as we'll showcase later when it comes to using this thing in space, and you can see the fittings. With the 60% reduction, I sit at about 100, 110 meters, um, uh, meters uh, radius, signature radius. That puts me on par with a large cruiser, which, uh, yeah, with the speed bonus that you get for the micro warp drive, does kind of cancel out, but the fact that I'm missing 15% reduction means you can get this down to sort of the middle to small cruiser size uh, with that micro warp drive active, and that is huge. That is huge with the Talwar. But then, let's talk about fitting this. The Talwar Assault is an absolute beast in PvP, but can also be very powerful in PvE if you know what you're doing. And the fit that I'm showcasing here kind of appeals to both sides. You don't need to swap between PvE or PvP fittings on this one. It'll work just as well in both scenarios. Now I want to give a huge shout out and thank you here to Mine from the Catskull Cartel Discord. I sat and had a long chat with Mine about the Talwar Assault, suggested a few fittings, and we bounced ideas back and forth. And this is a fitting that Mine suggested, crunched a load of numbers, shoved it under my nose and said this is how powerful this thing is. And I've been loving this fit, especially for PvP, but for PvE it is still very enjoyable. So let's have a look at how this one works. Now for the high slots here, I've gone for Discipline Small Missile Launchers. This is an expensive ship, it's a tech level 7 ship, and it requires advanced skills to operate. You should not be skimping out on how you fit this. I wouldn't even bother with anything less than faction level loot, so things like uh, Kaldari Navy or a public fleet issue. That kind of stuff is the minimum you should be fitting to this. Discipline Small Missile Launchers are of course the officer level gear, meta level 8. 58.1 DPS and a range of 26.31. Now the reason I've gone for missile launchers rather than torpedoes is so that we can modulate range. I can sit theoretically anywhere between 0 and 26.31 and still be able to hit my target. Ultimately, that full range of 26.31 will allow me to outrange a lot of different weapons. If someone's only got 15 to 20 kilometer range weapons, I can sit at the 25 kilometers orbiting around them and they just simply can't hit me whilst I damage them. And I can use the stasis web of fire to make sure they stay at that range. Or if it's something like, I don't know, like a, a stabber or something that's using turrets, I can then orbit up close and personal TM, slap it on a t-shirt and get under their guns, moving at a tight enough orbit with a high enough angular of velocity that their turrets struggle to track me. The reason for using the, uh, the missile launchers rather than the torpedoes is to give me that variability and that choice in what range I fight at. And of course, important to that is that interruptive stasis web of fire, which here, as I said, optimal range of 169 kilometers. That's a very rude awakening if you're someone like me who's orbiting in a succubus at say 14 to 15 kilometers, hoping to outrange your web of fire, and then you come along and hit me at 16, nearly 17 kilometers. Obviously, the better um, you can get here for a stasis web of fire, the better. The Predators are ridiculously expensive right now, but are worth getting your hands on if this is the kind of ship that you intend to fly. You can put two of these on for PvE, but I've gone for a mix here of PvP as well, which means we have an interruptive warp disruptor. Again, 26.25 kilometers. Apply the point first, then the web, so that you can lock them down, 
hold them in position and start hitting them with everything you've got with those uh, discipline missile launchers. Obviously, this is a warp jammer strength of two, which means most ships in PvP will be locked down with that. Obviously, miners will still be pesky and escape from that, but most PvP fitted ships won't have much in the way of warp stability beyond maybe one or two, and this should be enough then to lock them down. Because of those bonuses that we get to the micro warp drive signature radius adjustment here, I've gone for a scout small micro warp drive flight velocity adjustment of 528%. It's a humongous increase to the amount of air. Uh, uh, the speed that this thing can kick out and that's barely barely hampered by the signature radius of 175 now i've talked about this at length in the propulsion video but to give a basic explanation normally you only use a micro warp drive for modulating your range not for trying to speed tank simply because you never get that full flight velocity adjustment when you're orbiting but you do still get the full signature radius adjustment and it's normally about a 500 percent increase to speed and a 400 percent increase to signature radius therefore there's not much room in you know, not much speed has to be lost before the signature radius penalty outweighs the benefit of the flight velocity adjustment. That's not the case here with the Talwar Assault. That signature radius adjustment is so small, and you can get it smaller if you take advanced destroyer command up to five. That signature radius adjustment is so small comparatively, the flight velocity adjustment has a lot to drop before that becomes an overall penalty. Now this is then, you're still going to be taking some damage. So of course we've got a damage control unit there, a basic damage control unit I've gone for here, 7.97% uh, resistance across the board to every single one of my resistance types, electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive, and across shield, armor, and structure. I get that bonus of being able to activate this for a full 18 seconds and getting the additional 800% boost on top of these. Those 7.97 uh, resistances are across the board just for having this fitted. Activating it increases that by 800%, lasts for 18 seconds, and means for those 18 seconds I take almost no damage at all. Now for when I do take damage, I've then fitted a Trapper Small Shield Extender. Now the reason I've gone with this is just to increase the amount of shield by 629. I can whack that to extend by 25 seconds, to extend for 25 seconds, sorry, by a further 629. If I'm expecting to take some damage, I can put that and the damage control unit on at the same time to get some massive amount of uh, bonus shields and take, uh, reduce the amount of damage I'm taking so that hopefully once I've, uh, in that time, I should be able to destroy the opponent and move away. In PvP, uh, sorry, in PvE, you may wish to swap the Trapper Small Shield Extender here for something like a Veteran Shield Booster, simply because that does give you the ability to repair any incidental damage that you do take. A little bit more of an active tank, you do lose your capacitor stability at that point, but it's kind of that, that, that's the choice you make. Do you go for having a bigger tank than them and trying to kill them before they can kill you? Or do you go for that active tank and try and out heal the damage? Here, I personally find the shield extender is the better option. Mine sent me a whole load of graphs and details that suggested that the shield extender is the better option too. And 100% I defer to his expertise on that one. Finally, then talking about killing them before they kill me, a full duplex ballistic control system rounds out our low slots. This is a weapon upgrade module, flat, cold, 5% damage bonus just for having it fitted, and I can activate it for an 8.03% increase overall as well, which does push that defense way over the 240, almost to 250 mark. Um, and again, in PvP, you activate everything, you hit them with everything you have, and if you don't kill them before you run out of capacitor, you quickly warp away and hope that you escape. That's kind of how this one works. Now, because of that, we have a look then at the rigs. Now, the rigs I've gone for here, we've got a Warhead Calefaction Catalyst, straight up damage bonus there, along with bay loading accelerators for an activation time adjustment. Now, I've got two of these fitted because ha with the penalty of how these work, if I'd put two Warhead Calefaction and only one bay loading accelerator, it's not quite as high as having uh, two bay loading and one Warhead Calefaction Catalyst. It's all about hitting as hard and fast as you can in as short a time as possible and getting out of there quickly. We've run the numbers on this. One Califaction Catalyst, two Bay Loading Accelerators is the biggest form of DPS. Now here again, I've only gone for Mark 1s simply because I'm not made of ISK, but it is worth, if you are maining into this ship, taking those up to the level 2 rigs. Obviously every bit of damage really does count. 
for the mechanical rigs, polycarbon engine housing uh, is the inertia modifier adjustment. That means that if I do have to go into a tighter orbit, because I'm trying to get under a ship's guns, then I can maintain a higher speed whilst maintaining that sharp orbit. That's ultimately what the inertia modifier is about. The other one here is an auxiliary thruster. Flight velocity adjustment of 10% obviously just means a bigger flight velocity, faster moving, harder to hit. What rolling? I'm rolling into the bonuses there. Now, finally, a semiconductor memory cell does appear to be vital to this ship. The capacitor capacity is terrifyingly low on this ship, and without this fitted, it gets about 18 seconds of stability of uh, capacitor. That's terrible. But with this fitted, I am actually capacitor stable without a Nosferatu. And considering I'm not going to be up close and personal for the most part, a Nosferatu is not a good option. Running with a single semiconductor memory cell seems like the best thing to do. And if you find that you're using this a lot for PvE, and thus going up against a lot of rats with uh, Nosferatus, you may want to swap something else out for another one of these. I would personally lose the uh, polycarbon engine housing at that point, simply because the rats, you can try and outrange that little bit more. But that's the fitting. Let's actually go and take this one and see if we can showcase it in action. To showcase this in PvE, I'm going to be doing Mining Area Safety Concern Advanced. Now, of course, this is only a Tech Level 5 or Tech Level 6 mission, I can't remember which, but I just want to showcase the actual theory of how this all works using the fit that we've showcased. Now, obviously, I'm warping in here at the 30 kilometers mark, and this is, of course, after the PvE changes. A lot of you folks have been asking about that. There's not really much to say. They just aggro properly and actually chase after you now, which they didn't before. They act like an actual fleet. Anyway, here we are now at the 30 kilometer mark. We're a little bit too far away from some of these guys, but we're going to deal with that. We lock on, we're going to orbit the first one here, and I'm going to set that to about 25 kilometers on the Gisty Burst. Now, because I am a little bit too far away, and I'm going to increase that signature radius going in a straight line, I'm going to activate both the damage control and the shield extender. And as soon as I'm in range here of that 26 kilometer mark, I will start to activate my missiles. Now, here we go. There we go. Let's launch those missiles and do some damage to that Gisty Burst. And you'll see the sheer amount of pain this thing can dish out in a single volley in just a moment once that actually applies to the target. I might have been just out of range, so it may not have applied. Let's try now at the 25, 24 kilometers. There we are, down in one hit. Holy heck. Let's move now onto the Gisty Thrasher. You can see I'm taking a little bit of damage here, which is why I say that you might want to swap out the shield extender for a shield booster for PvE. But ultimately, the aim is to deal as much damage as physically possible to these ships in the time you have. Basically, kill them before they kill you. And you can see that the damage I'm putting out here, 1700 damage per hit, is absolutely monstrous. And you don't really worry too much. 10, 000, uh, 1068 damage. You don't worry about whether or not these ships are going to outlast you when you can do this much damage to them. And again, I'm doing this from like the 20 to 25 kilometer distance away. It's quite astonishing. And I haven't even activated the uh, the missile booster yet. I will do that for the last ship there, the Stabber Trainer. But let's see how many shots it's going to take to get through this one. I estimate another two. 1600. Oh, that's so much damage. So much damage, and that's against a cruiser-sized target. You can see there should be enough to possibly not quite take it out in this one hit. Next hit will take that out. Let's add the extender on there. There we go, just so that I'm above the 100%. My shield can be repairing in the background there quite comfortably, doing its own thing. Um, whilst that extender holds it in position. Okay, let's activate the missile booster as well. It's going to push me right down into uh, low capacitor, but I want to see how much damage we can do here. 1,852 damage. Oh. <laughs> These are big numbers for a small ship. Remember, this is a destroyer. This is not a cruiser. This isn't a cruiser or a battle cruiser. This is a destroyer. These are small missiles doing this much damage. <laughs> Oh, there we go. That's the first wave done. Obviously, the second wave spawns. We do the same kind of thing. We go after that Gisty Burst first of all. In a worst case, if it does start moving a bit too fast, I can web it. And once, obviously, it's in range, it's not yet. Let's wait for the 25 to show up. There we go. Start launching against these. And it's all about outliving. At this point, I'm out of range. If something does apply a warp disruptor on me, I can just double tap in space 
with that micro warp drive boost away from whatever it is that is doing the micro uh, doing the warp disruptor and i can escape if my shields start to get low that's ultimately what i can intend to do here although in fairness i now have the damage control unit and the shield extender back off cooldown ready to use if i start to take a bit of extra damage as it stands though not much need to, and I'm quite happy doing this. I have been doing this as well on the Tech Level 7 ones, the ones that do have Elites in. I just couldn't get one to spawn in time for this video, so I thought I would showcase Mora. This is how it can work. This is the theory behind it. Let's showcase it in action rather than find the actual perfect scenario. I'm sure you guys can use your imagination. I wasn't sure if I was actually even going to find one of these today. I have been, I've been trying literally um, for the past five resets and didn't get one. So I, uh, I'm not holding up the video for another day just to try and get that. What I am going to do though here is we're going to activate that missile, uh, the missile control system again, the ballistic control system to get the extra damage. And just to, for the heck of it, let's push ourselves right down into low capacitor there just to get that extra shield in case I'm taking any damage. Although crikey, the amount of damage I'm putting on that stabber is just terrifying. Oh, two, three hits. Two, three hits is all it takes. And you can see that the capacitor on this does also recharge at an astonishingly quick rate, allowing me to maintain pretty much cap stability throughout. Always nice to have. You can see I'm, goodness knows what, 35% there, 35% before the micro warp drive, uh, after the micro warp drive went down. That is ridiculously good for using something on the micro warp drive. Remember, of course, the micro warp drive is eating 25% of my capacitor capacity as well. So let's finish off this stabber, and I think we'll call it there and head home for now. Although I think that might actually be the end of the mission. Anyway, last volley. Is this the last volley? No, we're going to have one more hit. It's going to stubbornly hold on for a tiny amount for the fourth hit. There it goes. Obviously, I, can, I could orbit a little bit closer as well so that I can do that. And yes, that was the mission complete. Awesome, nice and easy, maintaining capacitor stability, didn't break a sweat, didn't come out of my shields, and this can do all the way up to tech level seven, and indeed tech level eight if you're careful enough, though for tech level eight, I would recommend having that advanced destroyer command all the way up to level five for the full reduction to the uh, to the signature radius. Because if I open up the fitting window here, you'll see that with that currently active, my targeting, I'm 137 on the signature radius. So I misspoke earlier, 137 on the signature radius. Um, that drops by a further 15% if I have um, advanced destroyer command up to five. Anyway, we've got a couple more anomalies to check just in case anyone is trying to clear these. Medium anomalies do tend to be an interesting one here. Again, lots of loot, but no one... Ah, there we go. Who do we have? Let's lock on to you. It's a stabber. We are going to orbit. Activate the micro warp drive. Hopefully we can get in range nice and quickly to activate a warp disruptor. Come on, 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 come on. Yes, we've got him locked. Okay, we're in 25 kilometers. Let's activate those missiles. See what we can do here. Nothing overly exciting about this one. It's only a stabber. And crikey, the damage I can kick on this guy is rather impressive. But there we go. Oh, it's this fleet issue stabber. Holy heck, okay, now that's a different matter. That is a different matter, okay. <laughs> He's started to lock on to me now. I am anticipating quite a bit of resistance back in a moment. Um, typically, I'm lagging out. As soon as that goes red, I'm going to activate my damage control unit to make sure I'm taking as little damage back as possible. Still yellow at the moment. He's still slowly locking on to me, despite the fact that I've got my micro warp drive active. And I'm a huge target to him. Nothing yet. Crikey, that's taking a long time to lock on. Come on, dude. What's the problem? What's the hold up? Am I going to have a stab a fleet issue kill mark on this Talvar assault? Yes, I am. Next hit is going to be a confirmed kill right there and then on camera. Sorry, Ass Alexander. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, let's take out his capsule as well, unless he's going to fly off. Of course he's going to fly off. Let's have a look and see if there's any juicy loot. I am going to need to fly away fairly quickly, though, because there's a lot of enemies in this as well. So let's set an escape. Have that ready. Uh, we can zoom in now so I can see what is going to be in front of me, if anything, to lock onto and escape from quickly. Nope, nothing in the immediate vicinity behind it. Any interesting loot? Oh! 
Oh, that's a nice haul. Okay, I'm not going to complain about that. Now we're going to warp away to a planet so that we've got a nice safe space to go to. And crikey, again, sorry, the damage that this thing kicks out, this is a cruiser killing ship. And he was not even barely able to lock onto me before I took him out. Oh, let's have a look at that kill. Let's have a look at that kill and see what was actually on that ship and see how nasty that one actually was. Let's have a look. Kills, stab a fleet issue. And, oh, okay. Yes, he had stasis webifiers, acolytes. Fairly well fit ship, actually. Not amazing, but I got a lot of the nice loot. That was fairly expensive. Sorry, dude, if you're watching. It's nothing personal. Um, this is purely... Say hi to YouTube, though. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay, well, you've now seen that this ship doesn't get locked onto easily, despite the fact that it is still using a micro warp drive and getting that extra size. What I'm going to do here is what I like to do at the end of a, uh, a bit of a run like this is to jump to a planet at 100, turn away from that planet, and then activate the micro warp drive so that if anything does happen to come in and start chasing me, they're going to be so far behind me when they warp in that they just can't catch up to me. But there we have it. I've showcased this in PvE, and I've showcased it in PvP, that yeah, you can just fly up to someone and you deal so much damage at such an astonishingly quick rate, they don't really get much chance to react. As I said, it's all about that burst damage, getting in there quickly, killing them before you run out of everything that you have, and then fleeing. Although, in fairness, you don't need to flee if you manage to kill them all. So sorry, Alexander, nothing personal. Thank you for letting me destroy you, I suppose. I, I, I don't know how to react on this one. I've never actually done this properly on camera. And so many of you guys had a massive play into me after showcasing uh, me killing a miner back in the OBT. That it's always a bit of a mixed bag. Anyway, bless him, he wasn't able to lock onto me in time, wasn't able to actually deal any uh, amount of damage back to me. That was a clean, confirmed kill of a stabber fleet issue using only a destroyer. A Tech 7 assault destroyer, admittedly, but let's start racking up those kills. Now, let's see if we can find the kill marking. Is there a kill marking on this ship somewhere? There's got to be one here somewhere, but I don't know where they actually are on this particular ship. For those of you who don't know, kill marks are little dots that appear on your ship, little blue markings that si uh, signify how many kills you've had in that particular ship. I can't see it on this one. If I do find it, I will post it up on Twitter or something, or maybe mention in a, a, a one of the comments down below where you find it on this ship. Otherwise, folks, there we have it. The Talwar Assault in all its glory. Good luck with this one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I am selling this ship now after this um, on the Catskull Cartel Discord. So if you aren't already on that Discord, do come and join us. We do like to... Uh, I do sell the ships after I use them like this. Um, so you can get a fully fit ship for absolute dirt cheap. Otherwise, folks, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.